Hey there, folks. Sean Broderick here, and I'm here with Scott Melvin. Now, he is the executive vice president of uh, Uranium Energy Corp. UEC is the uh, is the actual symbol. This is a uranium explorer, developer, acquirer. You guys just made an acquisition. They used to be a producer, and they can be a producer again in a very short amount of time. That's the whole beauty of this thing. He's going to explain something about that and why the uranium space is so exciting nowadays. Could you please yeah, speak to Sean, my Sean, it's partners? great to, to be with you Always and, great and to your see clients. You. Uh, it is an exciting time, and I think a uh, number of catalysts that, that have us very encouraged these days, certainly the fundamentals, uh, a lot of the things that we've been talking about for some time in this uh, very long uh, uh, bear cycle that we've seen in uranium, uh, we, we talked about the inevitability of uh, production cutbacks when hedged contracts for, with global producers started rolling off, that higher cost production would uh, begin to come offline. In the last 24 months now, we've seen that uh, happen in spades with, uh, you know, obviously led by Cameco in, in Saskatchewan, the United States, and then the Kazakhs with their first uh, uh, announcement in the beginning of 2017. Uh, that you know, uh, continued in a big way in the fourth quarter of, uh, of last year with the Kazakhs following on with further cuts to Kazakh production. That's a one country OPEC, if you will, of 40% of production. That's and right. Cameco dropping uh, the big bomb uh, in the uh, now shutdown of MacArthur River for 10 months. This is a mine which is the largest uh, uranium mine in the world, some of the highest ore grades, uh, and clearly sent a strong signal to the market. Let me just interject there for a minute. They shut down production at this huge mine, and yet this is the first quarter in a long time that they've made money. Why? Because it's actually cheaper for them to buy uranium on the market than to mine it. And what does that mean? That shows you how upside down this market is right now. And the price needs to go higher in order for these mines to make money. Please yeah. go on. And I, you know, I think Cameco is, is one of the larger producers in the space, has always felt a bit of a responsibility to the market and hang in there through thick and thin. But in public statements they've made lately, they've clearly indicated that, you know, they they do have to answer to the shareholders, and like many of producers, you're much better off. We made the decision in 2013. We're better off uh, keeping our pounds in the ground and uh, uh, continue to de-risk, license our operations, and develop those uh, as quickly as we can uh, when prices recover. And so you're seeing global production really spawn. There was, there was additional news last week uh, from Namibia. Yes, so, uh, because... Uh What's the name of that mine? That might Langer Heinrich Mine in Namibia. And under Calvary. serious consideration, that could shut down too. And uh, that would take even more supply off the market. It does. And so what, what we're seeing now is, and it's really bringing a lot of interest back into the space, is that production globally peaked at 161 million pounds globally in 2016. It fell to 154 million last year and will likely fall to 140 million or, or likely below that level this year. That causes the uh, uranium market oversupply to uh, to be drawn down that much more quickly. The rebalancing will happen sooner than, than even anyone expected a couple of years ago. Right. Um, two more things we should mention is that for a while the for a while the Japanese shut down all their nuclear reactors. Now they're turning those back on one at a time, and for a while those. Those atomic power plants sold uranium into the market because they didn't think they needed it. Now they have to refuel, and they also have to turn them on, which takes twice as much uh, uranium as it, as it normally does. Then there's also the Russians. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have this kind of deadlock going on with the Russians now where they don't want to sell us uranium or else process fuel either. So, I mean, that also cuts off supply as well. Well, certainly, uh, uh, first with the Russians, geopolitically, obviously, uh, you know, in the headlines, the relationships between uh, Russia and European countries and the United States have been obviously very strained. We've been telling investors for some time that uh, it could be literally event-driven that causes nuclear trade to um, uh, be suspended between Russia and the United States. Um, we really uh, were... Uh, uh, interested to see that announcement three weeks ago when the Russian Duma, uh, largely as a result of uh, uh, U.S. attacks on the, the chemical weapons facilities in Syria, mm -hmm. uh, responded with a threatened ban on uranium exports to the United States and Europe. This is significant in that uh, the Russians have a 20% quota they can sell into in the United States, currently probably around 15% of U.S. supplies. But uh, in Europe, it's much higher, 20, 25% of their, their supplies. So 
uh, to have a shock like that occur would certainly send uh, prices higher. Now, a little bit of that rhetoric was dialed back since that initial announcement, but the Duma is still planning to issue some form of legislation in the month of May, and we're watching very closely to see if it includes uh, uranium or nuclear fuel imports. Okay, and I'll just add that when the price of uranium starts to move, because I'm an old dude, I was around the last time this happened, it can move fast. It can really start to ramp up, especially in a market that's a stretch in one direction as this is. Let's speak about your company a little bit. What would the price of uranium have to be for you guys to switch back on? Well, you know, uh, our strategy is, is uh, you know, to be remain unhedged. Uh, that's caused us to be uh, to have the discipline to shut in. So our uh, mine on standby is the Poundgana mine in South Texas. It has mm -hmm. very low uh, production costs, $22 cash, less than 30 all in. That's first or second quartile globally. Um, we could restart there in a matter of, of two or three months, given that we're in a kind of a spinning uh, standby there. We, in a $40 uranium market, which is uh, not that far from where we are today at, at $21, $22, um, we would move forward not only with Palangana, but also begin to develop our Burke Hollow project, where uh, uh, we would, again, uh, would be part of this hub-and-spoke concept, right. satellite well field, about a 10 million dollar investment, six to seven months uh, construction time. So right. this is all part of the strategy to uh, not produce when the, when the market's low, but be ready to move very quickly right. when it does. And you guys know how to build in situ recovery mines. I was there before in Texas when you had them running. So it's not like you're newcomers to the space. Exactly. You actually have a lot of experience. You have previous experience as well. We could touch on that, but I'll just write it up. So okay. uh, just um, there's a lot really to like about this company because of how the market is moving and they're really well positioned and you just made an acquisition too, didn't you? We did. Um, the announcement this morning was the Reno uh, North acquisition from Energy Fills. It had added four and a half million pounds to our resource base in the Powder River Basin of Wyoming. Uh, the important aspect of that transaction is it came on the heels of last year's acquisition of the Reno Creek, the main body of the deposit. This is in the heart of the Powder River Basin. Um, adds 22 million pounds to our resource base, but most importantly doubles our licensed capacity from 2 to 4 million pounds annually. This is an interesting uh, deposit that had had $60 million invested in it uh, in a six, seven year process to per permit fully license that mine. Uh, we were able to come in and acquire for uh, less than $18 million in, uh, in UEC stock. So again, this is part of uh, Amir and the team's uh, strategy of really embracing the down cycles, acquiring undervalued assets, and uh, moving them forward when, when prices uh, uh, improve. Okay, well, we have to wrap this up, but I just want to ask you two more questions. How much cash do you guys have in the bank, and what's your cash burn right now? So we have about $15 million, uh, cash on hand. Uh, we're not burning much in this, uh, in not being in full production mode. Mm -hmm. Our cash burns less than $900,000 a month, and again, that's mainly a creative spend on permitting licensing and we did a limited drill program at Burke Hollow but we added uh, two million pounds of organic resources to so the it was portfolio. Worth it. Okay, great. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add before we go? No, I think it just, uh, you know, whether investors have been, uh, their patience has been tested with this long downturn or it's, a, it's an entry point for new investors in the space, I think as, as resource investors, we uh, we really we, we wait for these kind of opportunities to see uh, a commodity where production is now really dropping dramatically. Some would say plummeting. Demand is strong. We see uh, we've seen the best nuclear growth in the past 25 years. There'll be 14 reactors come online this year globally. Mm -hmm. So demand strong, production's falling, and these secondary supplies and inventories that have been making up the balance will be depleted much more quickly in the market rebalancing. Uh, much uh, much sooner than uh, many had ex had anticipated. So it's a really exciting time for the space. Okay, great. Lots of good stuff going on in the space. UEC is in the mix. We will take a closer look at them. You folks stay tuned. I'll have more for you. This is Sean Broderick in Boca Raton. Speaking to Scott, thanks very much great. for speaking to subscribers. You, you folks stay tuned.